Why, hello there. Welcome to a filming location adventure I have been personally been wanting to do for a long time. We are currently at one of the locations already. Now, it's gonna be a mix-up, it's gonna be a mash-up, it's gonna be a lot of locations, not gonna be all of them, unfortunately, but it's gonna be a lot from a certain trilogy that I absolutely love. Yes, back to the future. BTTF, we're gonna do some locations from parts one, two, and three, all three movies. There's not gonna be any rhyme or reason to the order of these locations other than I am in the area for the next few days. You're gonna have to you're, you're gonna have to, you know, go along with some wardrobe, some wardrobe changes that I'm gonna do because it is gonna be a few days, but let's get this started because we don't have a lot of time. We ain't got a lot of time. Time, time. What am I talking about? I got all the time I need, but we're here. So these train tracks behind me, this is actually where the trilogy ends. This is from part three, Back to the Future part three. This is where the DeLorean gets hit and it gets destroyed, just like you wanted, Doc. It gets destroyed. But then you you make a time machine out of a train. Doesn't hold, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, Doc. Why why did you want to? Why did you just want to come say hi to to Marty? No, I know you just had to get you just had to get Einstein. Absolutely, I understand. You had to get your dog. But right here, part three, train tracks. So Marty would have actually transported back in time right back here. He would have crossed these tracks. He would have gotten some, some funny looks from people in cars. Like, what is going on here? Ding, 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 ding. As the little barriers are put down. He comes very slowly in this direction. And I like the shot of the train coming from inside the DeLorean. This is where the DeLorean meets its demise. Right here. Now this is absolutely 100% the correct spot in that shot we just showed. You can actually see the manhole cover here. This curb work and brick work is all the same with the, with the railroad signal. The only thing that really bothers me is when we look in this direction, you can see a bridge. I, I, don't, I don't see a bridge. I'm starting to think maybe that bridge was, was made for the film since he was supposed to be coming over the Eastwood Ravine right here, and there's no ravine there, obviously. Did, did they put a fake structure for the bridge right there? Is, is, that, is that what's going on? I'm thinking that's what it was. Definitely the correct spot, though. Film history. But we are going to be seeing a lot of that film history in the next several minutes. So sit back, relax, and enjoy, because where you're going, you don't need roads. I'm, I'm gonna need several, but you, you don't need roads. Relax, let's go. We now find ourselves a few miles from the railroad tracks, not very far from where we just were. In fact, this road right here, if you go that direction, that's where the, the railroad tracks, I can't talk. That's where the railroad tracks are. But this right here, another part three spot, this is where Marty lines up at the stoplight and he's about to race needles. It's 
playing in my pocket. That always happens. Chicken. So, needles lines up next to Marty right here. Yeah, go! I love this this face that Flea makes as he throws it in the drive right here. Look at this, look at this. Yes! Flea, gotta love Flea. A little bit of a closer shot of where the Rolls Royce would have pulled out. You can see the top of that structure way, way in the back there. That's a few miles away. We drove like a mile down the road. You can clearly see it in the shot. It looks so close, but it's so far. Crazy. Drag racing coming at you live from the corner of Doris and Oxford Drive in Cabrillo, California. Hilldale, 1985. Now our next stop brings us quite a few miles from where we just were between the train tracks and that spot, uh, Hilldale, 1985. We are now in Burbank, Burbank, California. And if you were hungry, this would be a good place because located right here at the address of 533 Victory Boulevard, we have Burger King. Now, this is a very special Burger King. Not because it's Burger King, but because this is where we first meet Marty. In a garage, in a shed, a workshop, if you will, located right here at the back of the parking lot. This is where we are first introduced to Marty McFly. Now Marty will come out as he's late for school. He's gonna come out of the garage doors right there. He's gonna hop on his skateboard. There's a few things here that if you point out, I'll actually point them out to you in one moment here, but you can definitely make them out. He's gonna come this way and he will actually latch on to the back of a truck. It's gonna pull him out of the road here. Now, like I said, a few things. The Burger King itself has gone over a little facelift. This building over here, that can be made out in the scene. That horn made me jump. That's, that's odd, I don't normally jump at car horns, but it made me jump. So this brick, brick building here can be made out, and there's a very distinct drainage area here in the parking lot that you can see moves right along here. That is very easily seen as Marty's riding his skateboard. love this spot. It is along a very busy road here in Burbank. Now I love it not so much because it's Burger King but because it's Back to the Future. Back to the Future history kind of makes me want to get some Burger King. Burger King. It's a star. It's a movie. It's a movie star. Ouch. Oh, that was painful. Did you hear that car just scrape the ground there? It's too low. It's too low. Burger King here in Burbank, California. We had to do it. We've got food from the Back to the Future Burger King. It does say private property, no trespassing, but the gate is open and there are people flying RC jets and, and planes and such. So we're gonna go in because we're going right over that crest. Road not maintained by San Bernardino Company. Very specific. We now find ourselves in 1955. We are in a panic. 
we just left the Peabody Farm, which was a mall several seconds earlier. Several minutes, several seconds. Time doesn't matter anymore. But we find ourselves in 1955. A concerned Marty is driving down this road, speeding in his DeLorean. He's trying to get home when he finds there's nothing there. Just, just says, coming soon. Lion Estates. What? This location is Cucamongo. Cucamonga? Cucamongo? I can't ever remember the addresses or the names. Cucamongo Avenue in Chino, California. So Marty comes up this way, slams on his brakes. The DeLorean will come to a stop right around here. Sorry, I got distracted. I was looking at a, I was looking at this little marker in the in the road. Speaking of markers in the road, I was going to get to this in a little bit, but look, they, they marked it. BTTF. BTTF. So the DeLorean comes to a stop here. Marty gets out and looks on in astonishment as he realizes his home doesn't exist. Does not exist. Right there. Lion Estates. The billboard would have been about right there, in that area. Amazing. Michael J. Fox then will start hoofing it to Hill Valley. I almost said Hoof Valley. <laughs> hoofing it to Hill Valley. But it's actually interesting because he goes down this road here. He will actually then turn around and end up the shot of him walking to Hill Valley is actually him walking back towards in this direction. But it's all on this road. I guess they didn't want these mountains in the background because if you look this way, there's no mountains. We then come down the road a little bit here. And you can see my vehicle is parked right there. That's where the Lion Estate gates were. The unfinished gates. And Marty's actually walking back towards them because this is the shot where we would see the sign that says Hill Valley. And I know he's walking this direction because you can actually see, it's kind of tough to see, but that water tower right there and that other structure up in the air, you can see that in the background. So he is walking this way. Mr. Sandman, bring me a treat. Bum 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 bum, walking down to Hill Valley on my feet. Dum bum bum. I know, I know. Such a beautiful singing voice. If you ever ride in a car with me, you will soon learn that it does not get any better than that. Sadly. To the future. Our next stop, the Twin Pines Mall, or the Lone Pine Mall, depending on which timeline you're in, but we're here at the Twin Pines Mall. Now this sign is not an original. This was a recreation for the 2015 celebration. I don't know where the A went. The A is missing. But it's a good recreation at that. The Twin Pines Mall. 1.16 a.m. Now the Lone Pine or Twin Pines Mall, depending on your timeline, as stated before, in reality is the Puinta Hills Mall, located in the City of Industry, California. At the entrance to the mall here, so where Marty 
would have came down. It would have came down twice. Several minutes after he came down the original time. The Twin Pines Mall sign would have been right there at the edge of the guardrail. Right there. Marty would have entered on this side. Witnessing this at the beginning and the end of the movie. This is this is the parking lot that we first see the DeLorean. I could honestly just stand here for hours. Scooch on through here. Let's not fall down the hill. Oh, 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 oh. We're good. We didn't roll on the ground like Marty would have right there. Marty just kind of took a dive. So this post right here, F2, this row F2, Doc's truck would have been sitting right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over here for a second. We, we need to, we need to change the, the mood. Right here, I'm gonna use this little space right here. Because the DeLorean traveled through time right there. So that means, why can't we? Let's go. Woo! I think we may have made a, a wrong stop. This is like something out of Biff's version of 1985. We got helicopters searching we got fireworks going off police officers everywhere this is crazy look at this look at this helicopter this is wild this is crazy i was thinking about flying the drone that's a good thing i didn't do that but anyway now that we have our mood set if we could get the the come on come on camera you can focus folks there we go now that we're focused we're here we're in the parking lot we are at the Puente Hills Mall this helicopter is crazy can't make this stuff up we're at the Puente Hills Mall and this is where we have Doc and Marty standing here the truck would have been parked about here this is where they test the time machine for the very first time they disintegrate Einstein okay they don't actually disintegrate him but they do send him in to the future one minute into the future to be exact later on Marty would be standing up on the ledge here we're gonna do this a little bit more detailed in the daylight, but I just wanted to show it at night. We wanted to we wanted to fast forward through time a little bit and just show some of these shots in the dark. Again, once we uh We'll check these out in a minute here in a little bit more detail, but here we are. La Puente Hills. La Puente. I said La Puente. It's just Puente Hills Mall. Alright, we will come back a little bit more detailed in a second here. Let me get back. I gotta get back to my, my time my time portal my time machine there's cops everywhere there's a cop up there he's guarding the entrance right here this little spot right here this is my my to travel back through time so let's let's do this all right say bye to the search helicopter bye search helicopter and here we go Oh my goodness, 
that absolutely had to be the wrong year. We don't we didn't only make it nighttime, we made it the wrong year. That was definitely Biff's Biff's timeline there. That was that was interesting. That's that was different. Search helicopters, all kinds of crazy stuff. But as we were talking, so Doc's truck would have been parked about here. This is where we see it back down for the first time, that beautiful piece of machinery. If you're gonna build a time machine, why not build in build it in some style? I love that these little dividers here can still be seen. That was in the movie. Doc, you disintegrated Einstein! Amazing stuff. Truly, truly is. We're gonna hop in the car and, and see if we can follow the DeLorean's path when Marty's, Marty's going. This was all pine trees. Pine trees, as far as the eye could see. Old man Peabody. All right. I, I'm. It hasn't been that long in the video, but I've been here a long time. I, I just, I can't. Uh, I love it. Back to the future. Now right, let's go hop in, hop in my car. That's not my car. That's not my. Well, I mean, that one right there. That's my rental car. It's not my car, but it's a rental car. Dun dun dun. Sorry, it's a little off tune. I think there's a DeLorean in that truck? Huh. Interesting. At the stop sign, turn right onto Kalima Road. Proceed to the route. In 900 feet, turn right onto Kalima Road. Let's see if these bastards can do 90. Ninety's extremely fast in this parking lot. At the stop sign, turn right onto Kalima Road. This is the Whittier High School. Here in Whittier. Whittier? Whittier? Whittier. California. I'm not gonna film too much here. The school is in session. There are students. It feels a little weird. But we'll talk about that location a little bit. I'm not gonna do any photos or anything. But we are gonna go down and around the corner here because down and around the corner is Strickland's house from 20, or no, not 2015, from 1985, alternate 1985, Biff's 1985, Strickland's house. So Marty, actually right on this road right here on 12 511 Bailey Street slackers we can see that shot at one point when Marty is walking this is where he sits down and grabs the newspaper right there all right we're gonna keep going Location we can't get to right here Hilldale 2015 so Marty's house is back here the corner where Biff steals the time machine is back here it's actually if you go in there 
make a little left around there. It's back. It is gated. Can't get in. Can't get in. We're gated. We're stuck out. But this is it. This is Hilldale. Welcome to Hilldale 2015. While we're, while we're experiencing a little bit of an issue here, let's talk about another thing. Did you know that you cannot record Tesla's equipment? I didn't know that. So we're in the parking lot of the Back to the Future Mall and we're driving up and I wanted to make a joke because I was like, I, 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 I started saying the joke. I'm like, you're telling me this sucker's nuclear? And I was going, no, 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 this sucker's electrical. But I need the 1.21 gigawatts. So I was gonna make that joke. And as I was looking at the Tesla supercharger, and a Tesla employee was at the charging station and he came up pretty aggressive actually and said you you can't my battery just died in the camera so speaking of electrical we needed some electrical but I don't really know when when it actually stopped recording so long story short back to future mall in the parking lot trying to take a a video of the Tesla charger was told can't take a video of the Tesla charger that car's going in. The gate's just opening. Can I just drive up? Can I just drive up? I, I don't want to go in. It, there's all kinds of warning labels. I don't want to go in. But yes, no video recording of Tesla equipment. Interesting. Another quick stop is going to be 161 North Magnolia Avenue, Monrovia, California. It's Jennifer's house. Jennifer Parker. Far out. Hey look, they got those bars off the windows. It's awesome. If we look down the street, nice little view of the mountain there. Jennifer. It always makes me curious how they pick certain homes. Because like this is this is pretty far away from the other locations we've done so far. Like, why this one? They're just driving up and down the street and like, that's Jennifer's house. That's just something I never got, never understood. I mean, it's awesome, you know, how the locations are so spread out, but like, how? And then, you know, you jump to like the train tracks. That's so far away from here. Like hours, hours. Interesting. Very interesting. And for our next stop, we find ourselves in South Pasadena. We're on Bushnell Avenue. Very, very peaceful road. Down on that end, that end of the road. It's been very busy. But I've been sitting here for quite some time taking photos and only had one, only had one car pass. So we're talking about locations as far as how spread out they are. We're about eight miles from, eight to 10 miles. I mean, that range from Jennifer's house. But we got three houses right on the street. So first we have 1711. This is George's house. George McFly. If we walk down this way, just a bit. Oh, look, just when I say that, here comes a car. Here comes a car pulling out. A couple shots where Marty running up and down this sidewalk. Just two houses down, we have Lorraine's house. That's right, Lorraine Baines McFly. And depending on your timeline, Tannen. the street here this is the tree George was peeping in he's climbed in that tree falls down in the street he is supposed to get hit but instead Marty pushes him out of the way Marty takes the brunt 
He takes the brunt of it. But did you know that Biff was their neighbor too? He could just mosey on down here a little bit. Taking you for a real time walk just to show you the distance. 1809. That's Biff's house. Well, Biff's grandmother's house. See, he's only a few houses down as well. Biff Tannen. That is the Tannen residence right there. This house can also be this house right here. This can also be seen in the movie as Biff turns in back to the garage back there. Three houses in very short succession. Very close to each other. All on the same side of the road too. Interesting. But it's time to go down the road to another house. And that would be the house of Doc Brown. We now find ourselves in Pasadena, California. No longer South Pasadena. And we're at the Gamble House. The Gamble House is a very popular destination. You can actually tour it. It is not open today. There is a bookstore, which is the little garage right there. That is open. But here we have Doc Brown's estate, 1955. It did burn down in that timeline. I don't, I don't think Doc did it for the insurance money or anything. You know, I, I, I don't believe so. Beautiful. This UPS truck just pulled up to Doc's house. I think he may be getting a delivery for a new experiment. What do you think Doc of 1955 would think of UPS? Extremely fast shipping. You know, you could send it overnight across the country in one day. And Doc of 1985 would, would be like, well, of course, I helped create that. Doc of 1955, mind blown. And now we have our 1985 version of Marty's house is located at 9303 Roslindale Avenue. Right across the street here. The house is very distinct, looks very good. Garage is open. There's no Toyota in there. Where's the Toyota? Biff, get the Toyota ready. If we walk uh, a few blocks, about a block up and two and a half, three blocks over, we'll find ourselves on the intersection of Kegel Canyon and Sandusky Avenue, right here, right there. This is going to be our entrance to the Lion Estates. 1985, so now it's now it's built. Look at that. There we are. And now on the corner of Avon Street and Jeffries Avenue, we're back in Burbank. Now this wasn't an actual filming location from the movie, but we're at the Little White Chapel. The Chapel of Love. So in part two, Jennifer picks up a wedding picture and this is where they're standing on these on these steps right here right there at the chapel o love so it's it's like a photo shoot location that was used at a different filming location in the film it's it gets a little kind of complicated but it's a location it's the chapel o love and for my next trick now we are here not in Hill Valley anymore. We're quite away from Hill Valley actually, a few thousand miles away. Uh, a little bit of time has passed. This was not originally intended to be in this video, but I'm here and the other video has not been posted yet. We're gonna insert this in. So, time, time. It's been about three months of time. And then we're gonna jump right back to time because we got all the time we ever want. We're sitting right next to a time machine. 
We have all kinds of time, 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 time. My goodness, this is heavy. You know what else is heavy? This next piece that I'm going to show you. Now this is not a location. However, this is a screen used prop. It could be considered a prop, I guess. It is a vehicle. We were just at the train tracks not too long ago in Oxnard, California. They used a steam train to create Doc's time machine when he comes back at the end of part three on these train tracks. I just showed you those train tracks not too long ago. This right here, if we turn around, if I do not trip on the stairs there, but if we turn around right here, this is the screen used Jules Verne train from Back to the Future Part 3. Now if you do look, there are some differences between the movie and its current state. That is because after so many years of, you know, Florida weather, it does have to be refurbished from time to time and some things have been changed. But this is the train. We have a little plaque here. The Jules Verne train featured in Back to the Future Part 3. In the closing scene of the Back to the Future trilogy, Doc Brown has returned from 1885 in this time machine built from a steam engine. Marty, hey Doc, where are you going now? Back to the Future? Nope. Already been there. We have another copy of the plaque there up on the train. Again, this is the original. That is the original. I don't know if you could hear that. Right next to the train, we have a DeLorean here. Now this DeLorean, unfortunately, is not screen used. This is not the original car. Uh, here at Orlando, they did have the Oxnard car, which was the one rigged with the with the wheels for the train tracks, those steel wheels. This one is just a replica. The DeLorean time machine from Back to the Future. Again, this one, just a replica. But it is pretty awesome nonetheless. That original... C car, the Oxnard car, somewhere in storage. But this is the real deal. We got this angle here. Starting trees in the way. This is about the angle of the shot where Doc is standing, talking to Marty and Jennifer. You'll notice the back portion of the train is missing. That unfortunately no longer exists. But that is the real deal. Now we took a little walk. We are currently standing in the Simpsons area. Before this was the Simpsons, this is where Back to the Future, the ride was located. This was actually the building, the institute. So this is where your experiment happened. As you can see, it is all Simpsons now. I've been coming to these parks since I was a wee lad. And I remember it being Back to the Future. I can remember the DeLorean sitting right here, right in between these two posts in front of the Quickie Mart. Quickie Mart! But the DeLorean would have sat right there. That was the C car when it was here. That was the screen used car sitting right there, fenced off. That was a little bit more of a permanent fencing fixture. I also remember, now this is going off memory and I was little, so 
I'm gonna have to see if I can find. Oh, we got we got a guy fighting with an employee over there. Oh, I love people. But back to the topic at hand. We're gonna take a little stroll over here. Uh, I also remember. I forget where I was saying. <laughs> Not what I was saying, but where I was where I was when I was saying it. So I remember the train that we were just looking at was actually sitting right over here, I believe. Um, I believe it was sitting over here at the exit, maybe here, possibly, um, or back there. I'm gonna have to try and find some some photographs of that. Again, this is all off memory. I was a little guy, but I've always loved Back to the Future, so I think it was I think it was right back there. And I do believe the DeLorean actually sat up front here at 1.2 next to the entrance. Not that I don't like The Simpsons, but man, I miss Back to the Future. Thumbs up. Big thumbs up. All right, back to Hill Valley. And here we have the Mount Hollywood Tunnel located in Hollywood, Griffith Park, Los Angeles, California. Very, very recognizable from part two. This tunnel also featured in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, another amazing movie that I absolutely love. I didn't have time to step out and walk around and explore. Uh, we were quite literally on the way to catch the plane. So this quick voiceover and drive through will have to do. I do intend to one day venture back out here and spend a little bit more time, but I had to make this stop on my way to the airport. I just couldn't, couldn't not do it. Beautiful tunnel. And that is going to wrap up our filming location adventure for Back to the Future. We're back where it all started. I told you to be prepared for, for some jumping around and some time travel over the next couple days. Hopefully, just hopefully, I did not mess with the space-time continuum. That way, you know, alter anything, any realities, any existence, or any... I'm feeling kind of... A little bit funny. Ugh. Just as I calculated, Doc was right. I thought, you know, if I returned to this spot at this time on this day, my camera would be here. That means at some point in time, I got erased from existence. But Doc fixed everything. He told me to just come here and my camera would be here. Look at that, it's here. Perfect. So, to conclude, if you enjoyed the video, please like it, subscribe to the channel. We do lots of filming locations, theme park videos, and random things from time to time. And until next time, be good, have fun and learn something.